my guys. Uh, I've got a brand new script for you guys. It's called the Autopilot. And I'll just give you a quick demonstration of what it does and uh, how you use it. So here we have it uh, just animating away here. So we've started off with just a straight uh, Bezier curve. Um, created a geometry straight off it. And this geometry, um, we've created a few attributes that the, um, the auto pipe um, generates onto your geometry. And from those, you can actually animate those. So if I play it now, you can see it's animating away. And yeah, really, really cool uh, little script this one. Okay, I'll just give you a quick demonstration of how you can get it all up and running. Okay, I'll just quickly take you through uh, the installation guide. So, all you have to do is copy your uh, SV Autopipe PY file and just paste that into wherever you've installed Maya. So, Generally, uh, the default installation if you're on a Windows machine is just uh, Documents, Maya, uh, whichever version of Maya that you may be using. So in this case, I'm using 2014, and just your scripts directory. And if I paste that in there, and I'll just start Maya up. Now, if I just go back to that uh, auto pipe, um, basically, just at the top of the file, and once you've opened it up, you'll just notice the installation instructions. So all I'm going to want to do now is just copy these two lines here, which um, basically just import the script and execute it. So I'll copy those, go back to my, um, open up my script editor, just by clicking on this button down here, and uh, yours will probably open up a bit faster than mine, as I've got quite a few scripts that has to reload up. So if I just go and make a new tab. I'm just going to make a new Python tab and I'm just going to paste that in there. So we have our imports, um, import auto pipe, which will bring it in, and the line down the bottom, which will execute it. So if I just press enter on my numlock keypad, and that'll start it up. You can see the uh, auto pipe user interface over here. I'm just going to close it down, and what I generally like to do is just to add this to my shelf. So you can do that by going to File, uh, Save Script to Shelf. And that's all done inside of your script editor. And I'm just going to call mine auto pipe. Okay, so I can close the uh, script editor now. And if you look at the top, you can see that the auto pipe's been uh, loaded onto the shelf. So I'm going to click on that once just to start it up. And uh, just give you a quick run through of uh, how to uh, get this up and running. So I'm just going to go to my top view for the moment, and you can basically use any curve, so a Bezier curve, an EP curve, or a CV curve, and um, so I'm just going to probably make some sort of random shape, and I'm hopefully going to run into a few issues, just so I can perhaps help you to problem solve if you do uh, run into these sort of things. So I'll just create, create a fairly random curve. For the moment, I'm just sticking to my grid, and I'm just going to create a fairly. Oh, I might just create the freestyling just to hopefully get some issues. And we'll just press into there. Okay, so in order to use the auto pipe, all you have to do is I'll just turn off a few default options quickly. Let's click the execute button. So what we've got going on here is quite a nice looking curve. So you may you may or may not want uh, squished up ends like over here. You can see it's pinching as it goes around uh, quite a tight curve. And over here you can notice that there's a bit more pinching that's going on. So the first thing we can do to fix that, and that's generally on by default. I've just turned it off just to give an example of what happens if you don't, uh, don't have it on. It's the uh, rebuild curve uh, option over here. And this, this option here, I generally recommend, um, if you can, just to rebuild the curve um, manually. Just going to surfaces and um, rebuilding the curve up here. So edit curve and rebuild curve. So I generally recommend doing it manually if you can, but I have included just um, to save on time and just for ease of use, uh, just a rebuild option and built inside the script itself. 
So um, that's got my recommended uh, settings applied to it. So with the rebuild curve now on, if I click Execute, what you'll notice, especially over here, is that we're getting a much more uniform curve. Over here, we're still getting a bit of pinching just because there isn't enough subdivisions to handle such a tight curve. And uh, I was sort of hoping we might get a few wobbles or so just in the line when the curve gets rebuilt. But in this case, it seems to be uh, a fairly nice looking curve. So I'll just undo that and I'll just increase the subdivisions. So generally, you want the subdivisions of V. So maybe I'll just take it up quite a bit. 200. So you generally want the subdivisions of V to match the subdivisions of your rebuilt curve. So I'll change that to 200 as well. And I'll just execute that. And as you can see, we've got a much, much more uh, uniform curve going around here. So, lovely looking curve. Uh, we are getting a bit of overlapping, so we may just want to scale the curve down in this instance, or we could adjust our curve to, to suit. So I'm just going to take this curve down to uh, maybe 0 0.7, 0 0.7, and let's just execute that again. And if you look at this, we've got an absolutely lovely built curve. Mm, fantastic. Uh, still a slight bit of pinching, so we can um, scale it down just a bit more. Or we can also go into uh, just into our original curve. I can click on the Bezier curve, go into the control vertices, and I can. I've still got the history to reshape this if needed. And one of the things with when you re do rebuild the curve is that it does become a little bit more tricky if you've put a lot of subdivisions in. So. It's easier to do. It. It's easier to do it just in the start of other little things. So if I just uh, increase that with just a touch, maybe move this guy out a bit. And if we rerun re that again, it's cute. You can see we've got no issues there. But uh, luckily enough, and this is what I was kind of hoping for, uh, we are getting a few issues just down the bottom. So you can kind of see how we're getting this sort of the uh, speed bump, which is uh, pretty random to me, of the first time I actually come across that. So, if you do get something like that, what you can try and do is just to uh, lower the uh, increase the tolerance. So, if I just delete a few zeros off there and execute that again, you can see we fix the problem. So, just something to keep out, uh, keep an eye um, out for. And um, yeah, so now I've got it, a brilliantly built pipe. Um, so, you're probably asking, or well, maybe you're not. How are the UVs on this guy? So if we go into the UV editor, uh, you can see that the UVs are filling the 0 to 1 space. So basically what that means is if I throw on a, uh, a checkered pattern just to test the uniformity of the UVs. So I've got UVs here, go into shader, and basically all this is applying is a, a, um, a checkered pattern to the UVs. So if I, if I go in close, you can see they're supposed to be squares. But I'm getting these real long rectangles at the moment. So obviously the easiest way to fix that would be just to select all the UVs and scale those inwards. If I look at this guy, it's slowly getting there. I'll just keep it smaller. So that's looking pretty cool. So I mean once again that's that's a manual sort of process and the reason we guys use scripts is just to alleviate having to do things manually, speed up the workflow. So I'll just increase the um, repeat pattern just to give you an idea of how uniform we're looking at the moment. And you can see they're still a bit rectangular. So there is a inbuilt feature in this just to figure out the maps for you in regards to how thin this should be uh, versus its height. So I'll just undo this. Okay, so we've got our curve here. And I'm just going to rerun the auto pipe. So, and I'm just going to click on the UV button over here. And that's what this does is it automatically figures out the height to length ratio, which is exactly what we were after. So now, let's close that up a little bit. I go to the uh, UV shader again, and I go to that's uh, my repeat pattern, and we'll just increase that again to 100. And if you look at this, straight off the bat, we're looking pretty good. Like it's it's gotten us pretty close to where we want to be. 
So that's that just helps alleviate a lot of the, the trying to figure out how wide it should be and so forth. If you look at these, they're quite uniform, so we're looking you're yeah, looking quite good. Okay, so some of the other things that you get based on over the script is you do have the ability to uh, taper the ends. So if I put that to zero and I execute this, you can see we we're now getting let's maximize one my window space. You can see we're getting this nice tapered curve, so that looks quite cool. Obviously quite a few things you can probably use that for. So I'll just undo that. Maybe it's a, a some sort of crazy fishing hook. Um, and you'll notice that if I do execute that, that this is all flowing that way. So you can obviously uh, reverse the curve direction. So if I go to my advanced options and I click on reverse and I press enter, you can see it's now flowing the reverse way. So nice fast way of uh, getting a, a nice tapered look and going in the direction that you wish. Okay, some of the other features that you've got is you've obviously got, uh, you can scale it to however um, big you want it. So, maybe 1.5, 1.5, and maybe let's increase our subdivisions going around it. So, maybe 20. So a really high res mesh. So, you can get quite a few uh, cool looking shapes going. Uh, and the other cool thing that you can do is that a lot of these features are uh, keyable. So if I just uh, go Control A and I go to this uh, panel here, you notice that we have uh, just a lot of uh, attributes that have been added to the geometry itself, and this just allows you to control like the scaling out, um, afterwards, and also your divisions, and then we've got um, external length, which allows you to animate along the length if you have the animate button checked. And you also have, uh, you can animate the taper and the twist on it, which gives you some really, really cool effects. So I'm just going to do that, and I'm going to turn the animate on. And I'm going to execute this again. And just, just another note, if you do come across some issues um, with just the way that uh, your geometry acts when you animate, sometimes just turning on the linear button and using a linear curve uh, can help fix and alleviate that issue. Okay, so uh, let's just uh, let's get to animating. So I'm going to put this to maybe 0 0.1 just to start off with, and I'll turn off my grid just to make it a bit more easier to see, and I may even just turn off the uh, standard, where are you, it's the select option if I can find it, and it seems to be hiding itself, so we'll, we'll leave it on in this case. Um, okay, so I've got this at 0 0.1, I'm just going to go selected and I actually think it's off because I'm on viewport 2.0 so I'm going to go back to my default view if I go to show yeah you can see the selection highlight there okay so um, my geometry selected I'm going to go to the end and I'm just going to set this to 1 and I'm going to key that and I'm just going to go into uh, my timeline, and I'm just going to change the tangent of it so it's a, a flat tangent, and I'll do the start as well, just so we have a slightly nicer bit of movement. And let's play that. You can see it just speed up just a little bit, and I'll slow down at the end. So quite fast, you can get some pretty cool looking things. And because all the history is all all there for us, we can just change that taper back to who's want a pipe. And once again, we can change the scaling to uh, whatever you know, suits our needs. And oh, my alarm's going off, so it's time to wake up. Okay, so uh, what else can you do with this guy? Uh, you can do some pretty cool things, like in this case, like say if I wanted this to be a bit more like a wire, and I'm actually going to turn on my. Um, section mode again. So what I can do is I can select uh, polygon edges and this will work with those which is really really cool. So if I just take this down to something quite small and uh, maybe I'll get rid of some of these divisions maybe maybe just uh, 10 so we're not uh, going overboard with just so much detail we have here. And you can kind of see it at the moment it's taking on the taper effect which you may or may not want but it's quite cool just to see. You can see how it's just going along the whole length of the uh, the pipe. 
I'm getting quite a cool looking effect. And uh, maybe I'll make a few others that don't have the taper on it. I'll leave that at one. Take some more polygon edges. Let's do that. Take some more edges. Let's do this again. And maybe just a few more just to show you how cool this is. And I mean, the, the possibilities on what you can use this for. Like, I've used it on spider webs, I've used it for building tree branches, uh, you know, just adding some sort of randomizer to uh, the curves that, uh, that I've been extruding along. As you can see, we've got this really cool looking um, pipe. It could be some sort of wire system. And then we've got our uh, nice animation that's going on. And as, as I said, like um, if you're ever animating, in a, especially like a lot of things, what you're going to want to do, uh, just just to, uh, to start off with, is you're probably going to want to turn off the rebuild curve, just to take away a little bit of the overhead, and just just uh, manually rebuild the curve um, in the first first instance. But as you can see, like we are getting this really cool animation here, but it is playing back just a little bit slower than I'd like. So generally what I'd do, and you kind of see like on the, some of these curves are just getting just a little bit of a wobble. And to fix that issue, generally what you do is you change it to a linear curve and that helps to alleviate that issue. But uh, what else can you do with this? I mean it's quite, quite a cool sort of thing, eh? just to be able to animate something that looks so awesome and so fast. Yeah, once again I'll just turn off the uh, selection highlighting so you can kind of see it. Play along, and it's quite a cool looking effect. And once again, if I had if I had something to do this, for instance, go back to the, uh, to the start, and I'll just turn on the selection highlighting. Yeah, I'll talk with that, and let's turn off the rebuild curve. I'll execute that. I'll see how, we, how, how it goes. And yeah, we are getting just a slight uh, bit of a hiccup, so maybe I'll take off linear for a sec. That's looking not too bad. Maybe put back on, put the linear rebuild on. And maybe we'll just put the tolerance a bit higher. And yeah, we'll execute that. Okay, so that's, that's looking pretty cool now. As I said, generally what you, you do want to do is just to, um, if, you, if you can, uh, just to um, rebuild your curves in the first instance, and that will help uh, fix a lot of issues. Um, so we'll just play that along. It's a quite a cool looking effect. Okay, so uh, moving on. What else can you do with this guy? Well, let's just. Uh, Make some more uh, curves. And execute that. And we'll make another one. And execute that guy. Okay, so uh, you can quickly make a nice looking wire effect. So if I go to the, the twist edit option here, and I start twisting this around, straight away you're getting this awesome looking wire. And you can imagine if I had uh, continuously added a few more uh, loops going around, it would be quite a cool effect. But yeah, real fast, you can get like some sort of wiry effect, some sort of maybe vines. Um, there's a lot of things that you can actually do with the script there, it's just unlimited. So, absolutely recommend it for any modelers. Um, probably until uh, you can obviously uh, keep your original um, curves if you wanted to maintain your Bezier curves or whatever you're using. Um, yeah, it's absolutely unlimited. Eh? It's super fast, super handy, fantastic to use, and uh, yeah, have fun. Okay, see you guys.